Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to episode four of the Calypso Cigar Review Podcast. I'm Brandon Looney, your host, along with Randy Rankin and special guest today from Arturo Fuente, Rick Poehler. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Doing man. great. Love being here. Episode the... four. Yeah. Episode four. We've made it. Our five listeners have made it to so that we're going to do a fourth episode. It's not deep, that bad. Deep into the Calypso Lounge on the top floor of the Calypso Building. Excellent. That's right. We are on the top floor. We are. And the bottom floor. It is not a lie. Go figure that. <laughs> today we're going to be reviewing the El Baton cigar, and this is a Fuente Newman cigar, correct? It's actually a Newman cigar. A Newman cigar, okay. So it's a Newman, yeah. just straight up Newman. It's, most people don't realize there's a separation in there, but there is a separation in there. Okay. okay. We, can, we can explain all as we go if you want to. Absolutely. Sure thing. So first off, looking at the cigar, we got the, uh, which size do we have here? This is this the, is the uh, Double Toro. Double Toro. It's a big boy. Six by 60. Mm -hmm. Nice and shiny wrapper in it, oily. Very beautiful wrapper. These things yeah. just yeah. fascinate me, though, how they keep all the oil in the wrappers. Minimal veins. It's looking um, mighty tasty. Nice sheen in the light. Smelled great. Great cigar. Had a nice cold draw. Yeah. Let me do the cold very, draw. Very open. Again. Oh, you guys talking about cigar. I thought you were talking about me. Oh. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, you were a little oily and little, little oily. minimal veins. Okay. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> at least none at the surface. So yeah. Great. We should mention we are at the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge yep. in Richardson, Texas. As always. Thank you to uh, Mr. Polar for the cigars. Yes, thank you. Matt didn't pleasure. provide the cigars this time, uh, Mr. Puller. My pleasure. I always, always enjoy sitting down and having a good cigar with friends. For Absolutely. sure. For all of you that are not familiar with Calypso Cigar Store, it's at the corner of Arapaho and Plano Parkway, or Plano Road, rather. Beautiful selection of cigars, only topped by the confidence and, and knowledge of the employees here. Well, thank you. You know, the lounge, you know, there was a, on YouTube, there was a commercial that we shot four or five years ago. And it's fun to look at. I was looking at it the other day, and... Wow, the store has changed so much. I mean, oh. they showed our pipe selection and four years ago, and there was like 20 pipes. And sure. now we have dozens and dozens of pipes. And uh, But one thing that doesn't change is the lounge. The lounge is still one of the best lounges around. Yep. Wide open, warm, many TVs. Comfortable. Very comfortable. Nobody's going to hassle you. Absolutely. Now, this store has changed so much from, from when Matt took it over. Oh, absolutely. Originally, it's day and night. Did you ever come when it was the original? Oh, yeah. I was here before it was yeah. the original. Right. Yeah. The other sure gentleman owned it. Yeah. yeah I, other, I used to shop here. Other gentlemen rolled cigars here. Yeah. Never it's, was able to do business with him, though. That was probably a good thing. Well, it was a legal thing. That's, That's what, what I'm thinking. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> we had to That's back up I'm tobacco. Thinking. And nothing, nothing against him, but there was there's a lot of people don't realize tobacco was regulated highly by the states. And in order for us to do business with, with, with tobacco stores, they have to have a tobacco distributor permit to bring tobacco into the state. Right. And that gentleman was operating in such a way that he did not need to have one for his main business, so he never bothered to get one, so mm. we didn't do business with him. Wow. Interesting. First uh, first draw on this thing, it's got a lot of leather to it, I'm getting. Or do you? Good. Good. I'm a lot of leather. Mm -hmm. Good. And it's very tasty, a little spice in the background there. I was down in Nicaragua in January, and I wanted to know where they keep the dirt and the leather and the grass and that sort of thing for the flavors, but they said that's a secret. Oh, excellent. You don't, you, yeah. I, have, I, <laughs> I think there's some in there. I'm do you? At. I envy your palate on that. I like a cigar. I don't like a cigar. Right. Right. Yeah. right. And, I, and you prefer a milder cigar. Generally, yes. I found as I'm getting older. Mm -hmm. I like a mild that. to medium cigar. Uh, Diamond I, Crown? I can certainly... Certainly, Diamond Crown, the Diamond Crown Julius Caesar, the Diamond Crown Maximus, mm -hmm. uh, very much. The, so many of the manufacturers have confused full flavored with strong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And they just blend uh, just as a contest, see who, who can take whose head off, it seems like. Yep. A good cigar to me is something you want to sit down and smoke and enjoy and like to have another one afterward. Absolutely. Not feel like I don't want to look at another cigar for a while at all. Yeah, you want to be satisfied when you're completed. Exactly, exactly. And I'm blessed in the in the business I'm in. I'm able to smoke cigars all day long. That's awesome. So I like to, you <laughs> know, is. I like to smoke. That's a very good perk. I like to smoke more than one. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to enjoy them through the day, not yeah. feel like I have to scrape my tongue at the end of the day to be able to eat dinner or anything. <laughs> and do you find that you you kind of depends on your mood as far as if you want a little bit stronger or a different kind of flavor or or you just sure you have your sure. I fa I found out years ago I was doing an event down in Houston. We had a uh, Connecticut wrapper cigar we were passing out a golf course and we were all having a hard time keeping the darn thing lit mm -hmm. and just wasn't getting the flavor that I was used to getting out of the cigar mm -hmm. and like most of us I was blaming the cigar and it dawned on me we're outdoors we've got a wind going and everything 
I went back to the car and got several boxes of the same cigar with a Maduro wrapper on it, heavier wrapper. Mm -hmm. Stayed lit beautifully. You got good flavor out of it. So it makes a big difference where you are smoking and enjoying your cigar. A nice lounge like this, you can smoke anything you want to and enjoy it in here. Mm -hmm. But if you're outdoors, sometimes you want a little bit heavier wrapper, a little yeah. bit darker wrapper sometimes to stay lit and give you that flavor. I have noticed that... Uh Connecticut really it'll fall apart in the wind. I mean it'll it'll tear. Connecticut on you. is it'll, a very delicate wrapper. Yeah, absolutely. Very delicate. And yeah, so I don't smoke them outside anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's why you reason. that's why you generally don't see box press or or wrappers on, mm. on a Connecticut at all. This manufacturer that makes the El Baton for us is coming out now. We're just starting to introduce a new line called Perla del Mar. And it has a Connecticut seed grown in Ecuador, Connecticut wrapper. And that is box pressed. And the ones I smoked to that are holding up well. I was scared to death, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. What's this wrapper going to do? Right. But it's holding up very well. It's got some real good properties to it. Very flavorful. In fact, in Cigar Insider, it just had a uh, 90 rating. Oh, oh okay. It was the only one rated with Cubans up that high. Nice. Yeah, very I'd nice. Like to try right. this. I yeah, think it's going to be another winner. Speaking of winter, uh, not winter. Did I say winter? Winter. <laughs> Speaking of winter and, and what's coming up, uh, are you looking forward to IPCPR? Oh, always. The IPCPR is a great time. You get to see everybody's product laid out. You get to see folks that from around the country that you made friends with over the years that you don't see them except that one time a year. Right. Uh, you get to, and I've kind of isolated to a certain degree even from the distributor back in Tampa. They're great people. We talk all the time, but you don't have face-to-face -face that often, and you get that face-to-face -face and kind of rebond. You get to try a new product that's there. Uh, you get to see customers that come in and can see everything you have laid out. As we go around and call on customers, we can take in a few boxes of cigars maybe, but they can't see the whole line laid out. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way they can see everything you have and how it can be presented, and, and they can get ideas for their own stores, what they can do maybe to change their store a little bit if they decide right. to. Okay. That's a, that's a perk I hadn't thought about. Right. It's a fun place, too, to look. You can tell good cigars and bad cigars by going to the end of the aisle and looking at the ashtrays. Uh -huh. If they're long cigars at the end of that aisle, don't that buy those cigars. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> if there's stubby little cigars there, go back up there and find out what they are. Those are good That's ones. That's a great point. <laughs> That's a very good point. I was just going to ask, like, how many cigars would you say you would smoke at a show like that on a daily basis? Are you smoking through like, the first third and, okay, I'm going to try another one, or do you... We're Take usually so busy that, to be honest with you, I don't smoke that many during the show mm -hmm. because we're so busy. Uh, we can basically go from one customer to the other customer because the, we have the buyers from all over the country who are there. Their time is precious, so they want to get their business taken care of and move on. And you've got the shows are so big now, the floors are so big to get around. They've got to work them methodically. Mm -hmm. So they, they want to get their business done and, and on to the next place. So if there's another one waiting, you want to, you know, get that one taken care of too. So I don't smoke that much during the day. Sometimes toward the end of the day, particularly toward the end of the show, about the about the third afternoon or the or the fourth day, most people have been through our booth already. And then we'll start smoking some cigars. But it's interesting where you where you are to smoke too. We're talking about outdoors and indoors. To me a cigar in Las Vegas does not taste like a cigar in Dallas. Is it the dryness? The dryness dry the altitude or I think I think it's the dryness of the atmosphere out there, mm -hmm. and I think I get dried out too to a certain degree. Because mm -hmm. if I get a new cigar that I have not smoked and I just get one of them and I want to try it, I'll usually put that in a Ziploc humid bag to bring home to smoke, be able to compare it. Because otherwise, I can't get a good good uh, read on yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Good good way to put it. That makes yes. sense because it would dry out your nostrils and the retrohale would probably hurt a lot more and yeah. everything else that yeah. goes along with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you, do uh, would like Fuente Newman or, or other, you know, Alec Bradley, any of the other mm -hmm. companies, do they frown upon you trying other people's cigars at IPCPR, or do they want you to pretty much stay within your your umbrella? They usually won't say anything to you about it, but mm -hmm. it's just kind of good protocol. To not be seen smoking a, Who else? brought you the dance? Right. You know, you'll yeah. see a lot of folks like me walk around with a cigar without <laughs> a band you on the it. Dance. You, right. you can bet that's not one from that booth. That's right. You know. <laughs> Sneaky, yeah. sir. But, you know, it's... Uh, you want to try other people's stuff, too. Yeah, see what yeah. the competition's that, that's part, doing. That's, yeah, that's part of the fun of our, our industry. Hmm. There's always, they're, unlike women, cigars don't care if you bring another one home. So, you know, you can always <laughs> try another one Good and one. see what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. uh, they're always, you'd think after 500 years of growing tobacco and making 
things to smoke, that we would have done everything possible cigars. But when you go and you visit the plantations and you see how they're growing tobacco, how they're blending, how they're crossbreeding, what they're doing, you can see how we continually get new things. And that, to me, is part of the fun of smoking a cigar is trying something new. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, that's one of the things I love about it is I've, I've got so many cigars, um, and it's my right now my my drive is to try the stuff that I haven't tried yet because I've had some that I know I got it and I'm going to try it and I'm going to let it rest. I got it and I'm going to try it and let it rest. Yeah. And then it's let, I've let it rest for like half a year now. I'm like, I've got to smoke through some of these. Oh, i got to yeah. see what this is about. You know, yeah. i got to get to it. So Yeah, as, it's as, a, as, as a rep who sells cigars, I want, you know, most of the cigars nowadays, when you get them in, they're ready to smoke. Mm. Uh, back in what we call the boom days of the 90s in the business, there were a lot of green cigars. And, right. well, you need to take a cigar home and let it rest. Mm -hmm. You need to get to know it and its history and everything over, the, over that time. Because they were cranking them out so They were fast. cranking them out so fast. They were literally raking them off the rollers' tables into cardboard boxes, mm. bringing them back to the United States, putting bands on them, putting them in boxes, and selling them. Yeah. Uh, but now the manufacturers have got more time to let their tobacco rest, and it's real important to let Mother Nature play her part in the process because there's a natural, we're dealing with, with, with natural things here. Mm. If you, you try and rush Mother Nature, you may get something that looks good, but I can guarantee it's not going to taste good. Yeah. At all, so it makes it makes a difference in there, but it you know the cigars are ready ready to smoke. But good tobacco, getting back to my original topic here, good tobacco is like good wine. It just gets better if you store it and keep it properly. Correct. Right. That's usually the usually the the kicker for most of us. So it's trying to store cigars in a home humidor. Mm. We'll go on vacation or we'll forget about it or something like that, and all of a sudden, oh, oh gee whiz, all those fancy cigars I've been saving, something's happened to them. So it takes some discipline. Yeah, to stay after it and kind of, right. kind of watch it. But good tobacco. A uh, good example of that was last Father's Day. We usually don't smoke when the family all gets together. I've got, got a small family, 23 blood relatives. We all get together, grandkids and everything. But we usually don't smoke a lot when the family does, even though three of my sons are in the business because all the grandkids are there and we're busy mm -hmm. playing and doing other things. But last Father's Day, one of the boys, after the kids were upstairs playing in the game room, said, let's go have a cigar on the patio. Mm -hmm. So he went to what I call my, my in-law humidor. <laughs> downstairs. It has it has a tray on top, and I put stuff. I put a lot of stuff in there. It's good stuff, but stuff people will give me. Yeah, over right. time, and I'd forgotten about anything underneath. But you know, I kept the humidor real real well and everything. And he found a box of uh, Maximus cigars in there and brought them out. Nice. And those were so smooth. It was like really. A, oh yeah, I couldn't believe the, how good they were. And they'd probably been in there a year, two years. So I was going through at Christmas time. I keep all my samples in, in big big uh, containers with humidification and everything. And I've got three of them. I've got them stacked up. And I've got my Newman stuff in one. I've got my Fuente stuff in one. I've got kind of rare stuff in the other. And i got going through that rare one. I have some cigars in there from back in the 90s. Wow. Really? I've got one in the early 90s. Nice. That is yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, you know, they think, well, should I smoke this or should I? No, I'm, I've kept it this long. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fun to look at Rick Poehler's humidor and see oh, what no rare kidding, things right. he has? That would be amazing. Jeez, yes. It's amazing what you do collect. I can imagine. Well, proper humidor storage is very important. We deal with that on a daily basis. Certainly. Well, maybe not daily, but every other day, <clears throat> someone coming in with a humidor issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they just, it's because they don't pay attention. They're not looking after their cigars. They're not keeping an eye on the hygrometer. You know, pick up a cigar every now and then in your humidor and, and feel it. See, yeah. Does it feel dry? Does it feel soft? Feel soft, pull it out. Definitely. Leave it for a couple of days. If it's hard, keep it in there. Maybe bump up your your uh, humidification. Yeah. You're just looking at, after it and making sure that you stay on top, and that way you don't lose any cigars. I found out through trial and error early on that if you store some cigars in a humidor without cello and some with cello, the ones without cello will get more moist. Mm -hmm. I, I can and see so that. And so if I've got some... Without cello, I'll keep those in a separate humidor, a little bit lower humidification in them. But one of the rookie mistakes, I think, in, in the cigar, uh, somebody getting in the, into cigars, is when they decide they're ready for a humidor, we're all a little bit cheap. Right. And we want to get cost a humidor. Cost conscious. <laughs> we're cost conscious, very good, value conscious. Right. And we don't want to put a whole lot into that until we're sure. But right. the biggest mistake is we get a humidor that doesn't isn't built right to keep the cigars. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden you're putting fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, you know, whatever in that. And it's not keeping your cigars the way you thought it was gonna keep it. Exactly. Yeah. I try and encourage people to get 
the best and biggest humidor they can. Exactly. Because it's a piece of furniture that you're going to have all your life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and look at it as an investment of, of maintaining what you want to enjoy and play with. I agree. I was told that coming into it pretty quickly that, you know, if you're going to buy a humidor, go bigger than you think you need. Definitely. Because you're going to fill it up <laughs> once you start really enjoying it. It's just it's just like a retail store. I, I go into so many stores that are just getting open. They've built this beautiful humidor and everything. I said, well, you, when are you going to enlarge it? Right. Well, I can't imagine you need more cigars than this, you know. Well, it's not long. <laughs> Don't. I need more space. Yeah. Well, you've seen our humidor. Yeah, Matt's well, at the beginning, that. at the beginning, yeah. you know. I didn't want to point any fingers. No, at the beginning, yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt told me the story that he walked in one day after he he landed a couple of big accounts, and he just stood in there. He was so proud of his humidor, and he took pictures of it. And he showed me the pictures. He had maybe thirty facings, and he was yeah. so proud. Uh, you know, now we've got, you know, we're bursting at the seams. Yeah. Uh, but another proper, you know, another mistake with humidors is not seasoning them correctly. Oh, yeah, the exactly. Big one. And you, and you really need to research on how to properly season a humidor. The, the shot glass of water is not going to season your humidor. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, talk to your tobacconist. Give us a call. You know, we'll we'll help you out. We'll, yes. You know, uh, and a lot of these guys, you guys, like, sell them season, too. You guys we, do we, it. If you buy a humidor here, we'll season it for you for free. That's good service. You know. Yeah, it's great service. And we, you know, we'll, it's a minimal charge if you didn't buy it here and you want to sell. Mm -hmm. We've salvaged many humidors that... that People were getting ready to throw away because they thought they were too far gone, but and we've been able to salvage them. So just uh... well, you talk about humidors and salvaging them. We re we have J.C. Newman also has a beautiful line of humidors called Diamond Crown humidors to accompany the Diamond Crown cigars. Very high end lifetime warranty on those, and they mean lifetime warranty. They don't ask any questions. Really, if you've got a problem with it, you get a new humidor, you get a new humidifier, you get a new humidification system, whatever it takes to fix that. Wow, that's and, awesome. And Short of losing it or it being stolen, right? Well, yeah, exactly. I, I the the, fir the first one I had I actually replaced was in a local store here. The consumer took it home. At that time, we had instructions in there about moisten a paper towel, you know, and wring it out, and mm -hmm. gently wipe it down inside. Well, we're Americans. If mm. A little bit of water works. You know, a lot of water's going to make it better. <laughs> yeah. He dunked it in his bathtub. Oh, no. I heard of people and as doing soon, this. As soon as he oh, did it, he God. knew he made a mistake. Oh, no. You know, it's one of those things like, what have I done? No. And he took it back to the shop. And he, he didn't want it. He knew it was his mistake. He did not want it replaced. He said, you know, he didn't expect that. But he said, how can I salvage this thing? Well, if they got done laughing about it, they called me. And after I got done <laughs> laughing about it, I called the office. And after they got done laughing about it, they said, you know, we'll send him a new one. And they That's replaced great. it. That's awesome. That's Recent, awesome recently, customer service. Yeah, recently I replaced a humidor. The consumer must have had it in uh, storage or something, not had any moisture in for a long time, and then rehumidified the thing and got it too much and cracked the lid on the thing. Mm. And it was so old that I've been doing this 30 years. Right. I didn't remember the model. Wow. Oh, but wow. I knew I knew it was Diamond Crown because we burn, we brand into the lid right. the Diamond Crown logo in there. So we knew it was Diamond Crown, but they didn't ask a question about it. They <laughs> sent it, you know, said we don't have that style anymore, that model, but we have that capacity. So they sent him a beautiful new what was it, about three hundred and fifty dollar humidor. That's awesome for him. Yeah. That is great customer service. Yeah. That's awesome customer service. No, yeah. Newman is deep in customer service. They're a family that's been in business as a family in the cigar business over hundred and twenty years. And they're one of the biggest behind-the-scenes people in the industry. A lot of people have never heard of them. They don't have a line of cigars, say J.C. Newman. They don't have their picture out on things or do a lot of that sort of thing. But they're very strong in the business and everything from lobbying Washington mm -hmm. on, on the legislation that's going on, that sort of thing, to organizing the manufacturers and distributors in Florida and having all the... Uh, not all, but a, a large portion of the uh, Florida led, uh, legislative people and, and United States people down there for a day in their factory and through all the manufacturers' orders, gave them a very nice check. Wow. Also to keep their That's attention. Great. That's great. Yeah. That's very good. But they're very busy on things. In fact, Stanford Newman was the man when Cuba closed down that brought Cameroon wrapper to the United States to start using his wrapper really? on cigars. Really? Mm -hmm. wow. fact there. A lot of different things they've done that nobody... They just do it and keep going. They yeah. plan. They're very modest people, very conservative people. Eric Newman, I believe, still referees high school football. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. That is so great. we're coming up on the uh, end of the first third here, at least I am. I'm yeah, I'm about a, a third fast. of the way through. So we're going to take a little break, and then we'll come back and get into the second third. And um, you're going to stick around with us? Sure, you betcha. Excellent, sir. Okay, we'll be right back, guys. Hello. 
Hello, everybody. We're back with the uh, second third here on the El Baton in the Toro size. Double, Double Toro. Double Toro. Oh, pardon me. Double Toro. Yeah, Six yeah. by 60. That's a big ring gauge there. This is a big boy. Um, Very popular nowadays. We're, in fact, we're coming with a, another line of the 7x72. Oh, good. Really? That's wow. a really. jawbreaker right Jeez. there. That's an exhaust pipe. Bobby Newman's wife is named Meredith, and best name we've come up with it so far is Meredith Stream. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to touch that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I was just saying during the break that for the big ring gauge, I was really expecting just this overwhelming no. uh, smoke that was going to, you know, choke me out because yes. I'm not a big ring gauge guy. But no, it's very smooth, it very is. tasty. It does have a lot of smoke, yep. but yep. not an overwhelmingly amount for a 60 ring gauge. Nope. It's, um, it's a little stronger, which is odd because I think the Bellicoso is a little milder. Do you? Uh, to me, yeah. but I mean, I've had probably four or five of those, right. and this is the first time having this size, and it's definitely got a little more spice to it, mm -hmm. which usually the higher ring gauge you go, the milder it is, which is odd to me, but that's just my palate, so I don't know. Depends on how they blend stuff, really. It's, yeah. ama it's amazing to watch them blend, and how they put leaves of tobacco together and come up with a blend, and then keep it consistent, 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 consistent. Box after box, cigar after cigar. It's just amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. you've, you've got to have a lot of tobacco, a lot of tobacco to be able to do that. That's what that hurt, what's hurt, hurts a lot of smaller manufacturers. They get a, if they get a, a line of cigars that's, that really catches on, they don't have enough tobacco mm -hmm. to keep up with the, with the demand, and that makes it real difficult because it's hard when you roll a cigar to go back out then and try and buy in the open market tobacco to make the same blend. Yeah, true. With it, so you've got to have a lot of tobacco when you start out, so that you can keep it up and keep going with it. And of course, the blends will change a little bit year by year too, according to the crops. Mm -hmm. It's just like any other exactly. agricultural crop. Is it hot that year? Is it dry that year? Is there more rain that year? Or is it you know whatever it might be? Definitely a lot of factors. Yeah, it is. It is. As you said, it's it's all organic. It's all mm -hmm. all natural. Yeah. Is that uh, does that speak to the rarity of the Opus X as far as the Definitely, lack, you know the not lack of tobacco, but the minimal amount of tobacco you have to make that. That cigar. and the high standards mm -hmm. they put they've, they've placed on themselves to make that cigar. The Opus X actually came out of of uh, Carlito was giving a tour to some people from I believe Germany somewhere in Europe anyway, mm -hmm. and they made a comment to him that he was an assembler. He was taking tobacco, blending together and coming out with magnificent cigars, but he wasn't growing anything or you know that sort of thing, and he decided he wanted to grow tobacco. Okay. And at that time, no one had grown wrapper successfully in the Dominican Republic. It just was not something that had been done. Huh. And the Oliva family, who they're very close with and still close with today, uh, not the Oliva cigar line, but the Oliva family grows tobacco all over the world, worked with them, and this small farm they started out with, I believe it was 52 acres. It's up now, last time I heard anything, it was close to 400 acres. Wow. And they got the most magnificent tobacco out of it. Just unbelievable tobacco uh, for for wrappers. But they, even today they say they, they use less than 10 percent of the wrapper that they grow on that for Opus X. They're that particular really? okay. about what wow. they do and, and what the wrapper looks like and that sort of thing. They're actually not making, I don't think they're making any more, if they're making more, very little more than they did when they introduced it back in 1995. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it's so rare. That's why uh, you know, the vast majority of shops don't have There's just not the product there, and they won't lower their standards on it. They look at it as the flagship not only of, of their company, but also to show that Dominican can grow rapidly. Right. The Dominican mm -hmm. Republic kind of mm -hmm. flagship for them also. Mm -hmm. That makes yeah. sense. So we were talking at the break about this versus the uh, brick house. You said the brick yes. house is a, yes. another Newman product? Another Newman product. Newman partnered with a family in, in uh, Nicaragua close to the Honduras border that grow tobacco, buy tobacco. They have their own own plant up there where they work tobacco, uh, do their bone blending and everything, packaging, shipping, everything. They're, they're just completing now a box factory that we've had. To, we've been held up sometimes in our shipments for El Baton and Brickhouse by not getting boxes out of Hon the factory in Honduras because this Nicaraguan Honduras, sometimes the border closes down mm -hmm. and everything will stop. It's a shut up there in the yeah. Pan American Highway. There's, and there's not a back road to take. No. You go on the Pan American Highway, you don't go <laughs> down right. there at all. But they're up, they're up right in the heart of, of what was Sandinista country. We were up there in January, and a lot of 
red and black flags in the cemetery, a lot of mm. red and black buildings. In fact, when they took us from the factory up to the, some of the fields, remote fields, we had a military escort to go up there. And it's kind I of never, scary. Oh, that's kind of well, scary, yeah. It, yeah, but they said they did it more to make us feel comfortable. Okay. Because they're the employer. They're the employer in the area. Right. And no problems at all. I never I felt very safe. Every place I went in Nicaragua, we walked all over Esteli, went in and out of drinking places, getting soda pops. I would love to go. But had a, had a good time. Esteli is the heart of tobacco in Nicaragua. Now. That's that's what we hear. There are a number of recognizable factories mm -hmm. down there, big factories. Mm -hmm. I think Drew Estate's the biggest one down there. Mm -hmm. uh, down they said there are 44 different people making cigars in Esteli now. Some of them are just little, little room operations, but they're making a lot of cigars down there. A lot of tobacco is grown down there. A lot of the tobacco is imported down there. Mm -hmm. Everything is doing a wonderful job down there. But Newman started, it was their first venture outside of Fuente for long fill hand rolled cigars. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to have a Nicaraguan line of cigars. So they got together with Fidel, the man and his sons who had the factory down there, and they made the brick they made the El Baton first and it was just kind of a let's get our foot in the water, let's see how how it is. Mm -hmm. And almost immediately they got a ninety one rating in cigar aficionado. <laughs> wow, not bad. So it, not bad at all. So it's it wasn't a, it wasn't a let's kinda of roll this out quietly and just, you know, let it grow naturally and see what happens. It was all of a sudden an explosion. Wow. Instant success. <laughs> Instant success. And then they came on about six months, nine months later with the brick house cigar made by the same people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a little, it's it's what we call a complex, more of a complex blend. It will start off mild, build to a medium, and give you pretty full by the time you finish that cigar off. You smoke it all the way up toward mm -hmm. the band. Agreed. Where the El Baton is more the same strength from beginning to end. You get mm -hmm. a nice smooth start and finish all the way through with the, with the cigar. Yeah. On it. And that's, again, personal taste that we were talking about during the break. Well, what you like. Mm -hmm. If you like full body, you like mild, you like medium, if you like that complex complexity of changing, mm -hmm. or if you like the consistent from front to back. Yeah. And I like the change. I, I like the complex uh, yes. cigar, but it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. If you're smoking a cigar such as this that does have a lot of flavor, yes. then it doesn't really need to change. It, mm -hmm. it, the, the flavor sustains itself. So I agree. You know. I tend to I tend to gravitate towards complexity when I have time mm -hmm. to really sit down and enjoy the cigar. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. If I'm if I'm looking for something that's going to be the same from start to finish, that's kind of those are my go tos. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be out doing something. I'm not real worried about. You know, I don't want to have to go. Oh crap! I totally missed that because I was busy yeah. doing something. You know, then I'll go driving in your car. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, it changed, and I didn't notice. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you know, that I, I smoked both the Elbaton and the Brick House, and I came back to the Elbaton. Mm -hmm. Personal preference type thing. I liked it a little bit better than the Brick House, and I have a couple of Brick Houses. I think I got a fiver here way back or yeah. something. Right. And um, I'm gonna age them and see how they mm -hmm. turn out. Uh, but they turned me on to the Albaton when they first got him in. Yeah, I think you asked yeah. me at the time, which one yeah. should I get? And I said, get the Albaton. Mm -hmm. no, no offense to the Brickhouse. I've only had mm -hmm. one or two. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it, it was while I was working, so I really didn't pay attention well, to if it. If you had a better I rep, it brought you more in. That's you true. That's true. It's always the reps. You need to talk to somebody about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, who, who could it be? Who could who I talk could to? Who could you talk to hmm. on that subject? They've told, me for 30, they've told me for 30 years, when they find somebody who can travel, read, and write, that I'm gone. <laughs> okay. I'm starting to think there's a real shallow pool out there. People <laughs> it's all our three, education all system, people. Right. <laughs> to do all three. Because I know I'm at the shallow end. <laughs> well, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Drew Estate. And, yes. Uh, and, uh, of course, this is Rick Poehler. He's the patriarch of the Poehler cigar rep dynasty. Yes. Uh, Legendary Rick Absolutely. Poehler. I don't know that. But well, you know. Uh, we are talking during the break. I think this is kind of funny. Ryan and... Uh, and Jason, obviously, are brothers. And Ryan told me the funniest thing I've ever heard a brother say about another brother. He was teasing the fact that PJ's so proud, Jason's so proud of his hair, that uh, his hair has its own Facebook page. <laughs> 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 Cracked me up. Though, that was yeah, hilarious. yeah, we were laughing about about his hair at Christmas time. We're, we generally kind of get off the most of the reps get off the road in December because the retailers don't want don't want us. You know, retailers are busy selling. And they've already brought everything in, so the reps right. pretty much stay close to the phone. So if somebody needs something, they can we can get it taken care of for them. Right. So we kind of let beards grow and that sort of thing. And I saw Jason over the holidays, and, and uh, his hair had gotten so long, I told him I was going to pull his polar card if he didn't get a haircut. <laughs> so Turn in your polar card. Yeah. <laughs> so you have two boys. Both of them are reps for cigar companies. You got well. I've three. actually I've actually got five boys and two girls. Oh wow. 
when you okay. do something well, you just want to keep it you up. Keep you keep going. Know? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. But three of the boys were very fortunate. Three of the boys quite accidentally got into the cigar business, loved it. They, mm -hmm. was, they were all, each, each one of them individually was was uh, kind of in between some things. They were looking for something else that they wanted to do, and they got into this business. And like so many people, just love the people in the business, love the attitude of the people in the business, very family-oriented, and have just stayed. And we've been very fortunate to be able to work with some tremendous uh, manufacturers. We've helped, we've helped start a lot of people out. Right. Mm -hmm. Because usually when somebody starts out, they've got to go with an independent rep because they can't afford an in-house force. Exactly. And they'll grow to a certain size, and they'll go in-house. And we've all... Well, I've gone in-house with Fuente Newman, but the boys have all stayed independent. Mm -hmm. and we've, rep we've represented most of the people you'll have on your shelves that are mm -hmm. recognizable. Yep. Yep. At one point, a polar repped them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are doing the retro hail on this at all, but it's really nice. It's, it's, yeah, it is. It brings mm -hmm. a little more, more flavor to the cigar as well. And I don't want to actually Mine's burning. Some... Mine's burning well. Uh, Every one of these I've smoked burns so well. And quite often with an oily wrapper like this, you'll get them running. They'll tend to not burn even, mm -hmm. but every one I've smoked at El Batons, that's the one thing I've always admired about them. They burn nice and even, even when I smoke in the car. So many cars, cigars I'll smoke in the car, either the window wind or the air conditioning vent wind, because I run the things at full blast, mm -hmm. will Same tend here. to make that run up one side. I'm always rolling my cigar around and at a traffic signal trying to burn a piece off of it or something. <laughs> yeah. Do the but, same thing. But these have, these have stayed so nice and yeah. burn nice and easy. A good wrapper, even when it does run, should even out. Yeah, it's a beautiful white ash too. Mm -hmm. Really pretty yeah, ash. Nice ash. Yeah, I, I knocked mine off a little bit, but I had a good one going there. Yeah, I had about an inch, inch and a half maybe yeah. on mine. So uh, yeah, it's a good I cigar. It. It's a good cigar just to kind of relax with, isn't it? It is. It is. That's yeah. a good yeah. cigar. I like and, it. And, you know, we're recording this at cocktail hour, and this would be a certainly a nice cigar to go with one of those soda pops that you were referring to. It would be. Mm -hmm. It would be. I could see a nice scotch with this cigar. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We were sitting a little, little old, kind of run down the hill bar there. I just expected Humphrey Bogart to walk in. Mm. <laughs> Everybody's sitting around there smoking their cigars and, you know, drinking their, trying this and trying that and everything, right. different flavors of soda pop. And it was a nice, nice time. Absolutely. We were talking, oh, you know what? We were remiss. We, a couple of episodes back, we talked about cigars and movies and celebrities that smoke cigars. And I've been inundated by people who've gone back and listened to that episode. <clears throat> we left out probably the most famous cigar smoker currently in operation ron white yeah the comedian sure yeah <laughs> how did we forget ron white i yeah. just saw him a concert like four months ago didn't even then it, yeah but, so yeah. thank you everyone for reminding us that ron white is a celebrity cigar smoker he's got that great quote Definitely. too it's a, saying i have a cigar collection is basically saying i'm not going to smoke every single damn one of them or something like that <laughs> <laughs> right. but it's, yeah. it's not a collection <laughs> it's not a collection because i want to smoke every damn yeah, one, one of them yeah, yeah. <laughs> So thank you, everyone, for reminding us of Ron White. Yeah, there's so many movies we missed, too. The, the Bond movie that we, I was talking about where they're actually in a cigar factory was uh, Die Another Day. The one with him and Halle Berry. Die Another Day? Die Another Day? I think it's called Die Another Day. Okay, anyway, it's like that, that James Bond movie, and there's a scene when he, uh, the, the code word is, is cigar-related. to oh, okay. talk to the other guy, and they're in a factory, and the guy's rolling one and stuff. It's pretty cool. Great. So cigars are everywhere. I do. Um, I posted up on a couple of forums that I'm on that I was going to be talking to um, Rick today, and I wanted to see if they had any questions about Fuente for the rep, and they came up with some stuff. A big one, um, well, of course, is you know what new releases are going to be expected this year at the uh, at the show. Um, I don't know if you can really reveal anything on that, but yes, I can. I'm glad to, glad about it because well, Fuente celebrated their 100th anniversary in the United States last year. They had a lot of plans uh, to do. Unfortunately, a hurricane struck and lightning burned two of their huge warehouses mm. down to the ground. One of those warehouses had a lot of their real old, rare tobacco in it. Uh. So they didn't do last year. What they're doing is they're celebrating the first year of their second century this year. Mm. Okay. They're going to have a line that's supposed to be out for the show called uh, Casa Cuba. This will be, a, be a, a regular cigar out there on a regular basis. Uh, I've smoked it. I've smoked to several of them. It, the ones I've smoked coat my mouth like I remember old cigars or Cuban cigars doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, the whole mouth, you could just, it was, it was in Absolutely. there. I liked it real well, real well. Uh, the cigars have actually been ready for a couple of years, and they were ready to, to uh, 
start boxing them and decide they didn't like the bands. And mm-hmm. anybody that deals with, with Fuente and Carlito knows he's a perfectionist. Yeah. So they're redoing the bands. In fact, he was over in Holland just recently so he could actually see them when they, when they came out because the colors they would do, he'd pick a color, and when the color would actually come out on it, just like you paint your wall sometimes, it doesn't look like the color you bought, mm-hmm. you know, or the color you thought you got. So he was over there making certain of that, but that's supposed to be coming out. He's going to have a line which will probably be in the Opus X category uh, called Angel Share. Okay. It's always been a saying in their family that uh, the smoke that goes up to heaven is the angel's share of the cigar for, oh, okay. for their grandfather and that sort of thing. And uh, I was told when Carlito was watching those those uh, two big barns burn, he said the angels are getting their share today. Uh, wow. That. So it's going to be called Angel Share. What they told us about it, it's going to be wrapper from the Fuente, Fuente, Opus X uh, plantation down the Chateau de la Fuente. But it'll be a little bit lower priming. Mm. The leaves for the Opus X come off the top, hot top part. Mm. This can be more down toward the middle. So oh. I'm real anxious to see those. That'll be interesting. Yeah, be interesting. And we'll, we'll hopefully see some, some uh, other releases of uh, short run things. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's long before anybody thought about about boutique cigars, he was the king of, of coming out with a short run and firing it out there okay. and putting some out in the marketplace and everything. Like the unnamed reserve, is that going to come back? That was another question. Was about the unnamed reserve. Good question on that. Uh, the way that way that uh, we get we get from Fuente every Christmas what they call what we all started calling our holiday cigars, mm-hmm. our anejos, our Hemingway Maduros, our between the lines, our in between the lines, things like that, rare things that mm-hmm. you just don't see through the year at all because we can't make enough of them Mm -hmm. to have a regular item in the line, so we release it at Christmas time. This year, those showed up on one of those allocation lists. No indication of whether it was going to come again or not come again, whether what the wrapper was, anything. Mm -hmm. And it was that time of year, almost toward Christmas, where you had to get that allocated out. And we got very few boxes of them. I didn't even see any, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Uh Because by the time I got back out in the stores, they were all gone. But people who smoked them said they were great. I found out since then. It is a risotto wrapper, mm-hmm. and when I asked Carlito in January, uh, we, we were down in, in uh, Tampa with him, asked him if this is going to be a regular thing. He kind of looks off and takes a puff in his cigar, and he says, maybe. Oh. So you just don't know. You yeah, know? never know. Could be. <laughs> you, know, you just don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's very popular. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's great. I have a question real quick. Sure. Because I know we're about to come up on break. A customer asked me to ask you this, and I thought it was a great question. Is there any way to just, because a lot of your bands look very similar on point. Oh. Is there any way to tell the difference between the bands? Very uh, confusing. I've got that question too. Okay. Very confusing. The ones that have a little bit of green on them, I call the regular everyday line. Okay. That's all Cameroon. Okay. But then you get into the Hemingways. They've got a little bit different band on them. Right. Uh, I believe there's some black on there, mm-hmm. isn't there? I think so. Yeah, yeah, that's also a Cameroon, but you've got a different tobacco in it. Okay. Uh, the Hemingway is just such a fabulous cigar. It is. And you get the Don Carlos. That's also a Cameroon wrapper, but a different band on that also. Okay. And then you get into the ribbons on the feet. Okay. You know, some of our, our uh, Rosados have got a red ribbon. Some mm-hmm. have a black ribbon. Okay. But the green ones are The green Sunday ones are Chateaus. Chateaus, okay. Yeah, that has okay. a Connecticut wrapper on that. Okay. They're, really, they're very similar, just subtle differences. Yeah. That's I actually it, found or, a pretty yeah. decent answer on that as well online. It basically said, um, let's see, green, red and green bands are used for the main line. Uh, like the Cuban Coronas, 858, uh, Florafina, et cetera, and just correct me if I'm wrong. Red and black band is used for more upmarket cigars like the Don Carlos and the Hemingway, while the rare Anejo series bands are white. In mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, to give, to give you some, some background on how, we, how he picks colors, mm-hmm. when he came out with black ribbon on the cigar, I asked him, so why did you put a black ribbon on a cigar? Black ribbons usually denote death. Right. And we don't want that association. He said, Rick, it was the only ribbon we had in the factory. <laughs> and he said, if we waited to do another color, it would have been six more months till we could have released the cigar. By the time they get the ribbons from the United States, get them down here, get them in production and everything. He said, we went with a black ribbon. It's all about what you have. It's what yeah. you have. That okay. works that way sometimes in the industry. Okay, so this is the uh, end of the second third. We're going to take another little break, and we'll come back with some more questions from the uh, listeners. All right, everybody, we're back for the last third here. Mr. Polar has decided to stick around for the last third with us, and we're still smoking the El Baton Double Toro, and it is a tasty, tasty little guy. 
uh, burning like a champ. Still got that beautiful shine on the on the wrapper there, and um, packed with flavor. Just um, a lot of leather, a little bit of spice. The retro hell's really clean on it. Um, it'd be a great go-to cigar for anybody that wants something to grab and go, and it's you know going to give you a consistent flavor. For the guy that likes a large ring gauge, all the El Batons are large ring gauge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a great go-to cigar. And we must mention that uh, the Bellicoso was 14. I believe so. This? Number yes. 14 on the top 25, yes. So if you haven't factory, smoked it, definitely pick it up. The well factory served. brings these things out. The uh, brick house we mentioned earlier from the same factory was in the top 25 the last two years. The El Baton this year, they've ranked up there. Uh, and you're looking at at very reasonable retail yes, it is on them also. You get it's some. a tremendous value. Usually they're, they're ranked not only highly quality-wise, but also Best Buy and Humidor. Nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Absolutely. I mean, you look at a 6 by 60 you're looking about six dollars and change. Yeah, nothing. nothing. Depending on if I don't know if if, we're, if this goes out of state or not, it varies according to state taxes. Right. We're fortunate in Texas. Yeah, we that's are. That's one of the more friendly yes. cigar states. God you bless some, Bill Fink Senior. You get some really great smoke out of this too. You can blow some nice smoke rings with it if anybody does that type of thing. I'm, I'm watching the smoke dance off the cigar. Yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. So I went on a couple of forums, uh, Stogie Friends and Cigar Aficionado, and posted some uh, that I was going to be meeting with Rick Polar today and see if they had any questions for us, and I got a couple. Uh, the first one was from Army Smoker. We talked about that one already, about what to expect this year. The second one's from C. Midio. He goes by, um, that's his name, is Handel, um, and he goes by Chris is his name. And he asked an interesting question, and a lot of people back to this question up, why no box dates on Fuente? I know a lot of the... Um, Dealers now are starting to put box dates on their cigars, I guess, following suit with the beer guys. Oh, the born on date? The born on date, date yeah. yeah. So that people can uh, look at the box in there, you know, if they have a large humidor or like a, one of these monoliths or something, mm -hmm. and know the age of the cigar based on that. Is that something that Fuente is looking at doing, you think? That really has not come up. Uh, just off the top of my head from asking that question there, the different, we're talking about different lines of uh, cigars that Fuente has. They will age different things, different lengths of time. Right. So the box date would be when it's put in the box. Yeah. But that cigar may have been yeah, that rolled yeah. three months before. It may have been rolled six months before. It may have been rolled a year before. Wow. Right. So you have to look more at the line than when that thing got stuck on the box, mm -hmm. really. Okay. And we talked but about that's the... that's not, you know, it's neat. I, I, what, what I've done is taken a magic marker and marked them. Right. Yeah, that's what I do. When I, my I'll stuff do. comes yeah. in, I, I, I date a little, put a little sticker on the yeah. band and date it. So, so that's, a, that's a fun idea. Yeah. yeah. It's a little small little one. Yeah. We do that. Good question. With, with, with our bigger lines. Yeah. Send that $50 gift certificate out to that person. <laughs> Excellent. We'll do that. Because <laughs> it's a Fuente gift certificate. It was right? me who asked <laughs> that question. And then they had, <laughs> <laughs> so, and I had a, this is an interesting one because we, we had, um, uh, I do a lot of, um, I'm online a lot. And uh, we end up trading stuff back and forth. You know, have you tried this? Have you tried that? And one of the cigars that was going around quite a bit, um, and it's a great cigar, one of my favorites, is the Work of Art Maduro. Mm -hmm. But then, out of nowhere, a bestseller Maduro showed up. And I've seen them mostly online, but I've seen a couple of B&Ms carry them as well. People were confused. They'd get it. I'd get the bestseller Maduro, send it to somebody, and they go, oh, Work of Art Maduro, great. I'm like, no, it's a bestseller Maduro. So there's quite a difference in size. Very, eh, it's a little. It's like I think the difference in size is the four and a half by fifty-five or four and seven eighths by fifty-six. So it's okay. Well, they all pretty close. Are closer, than I thought. Yeah, pretty yeah. close. Yeah. Um, but the work of art Maduro is available on a regular basis. Mm. Oh, it is. Bestseller Maduro. You got to wait till Christmas. Okay. Okay. So that's a limited run. That's a limited product, and and the reason they're, they're a limited product, like a Nejos and the Hemingways, that's sort of thing. Fuente makes a tremendous amount of cigars. But everything they make is sold. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to make more of something, product A, they're going to make less product B or C gotcha. right, in order to do gotcha. that. So they, they like they like at Christmas time by releasing certain cigars at Christmas time. It stirs up a lot of interest in Fuente. Plus, it stirs up a lot of interest in the brick and mortar stores to get consumers to come in mm -hmm. that they may not see through the rest of the year okay. because you usually can't get the Christmas cigars online. Mm -hmm. Usually you have to come into a brick-and-mortar store to get them. So SoCal Matt asks, he's the one that asked about the unnamed reserve previously, but he also mentioned uh, when will more Rosado Hemingways be coming out? I think we talked to that already. Did you say? That is something that they, they'll they they'll make them through the year again, and so far they've been released either for Christmas or they've used them like for our incentives for uh, specials at, at the IPCPR show. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And then it was rumored that there was a, we talked about the fire as well already. Uh, mm-hmm. Is that going to be an issue this year with some of the rarer stuff coming out? Hopefully not. Yeah. Hopefully not. I really, you know, I really don't know. Carlito tells you no, but we didn't see it last year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is an interesting question. Josh Child asks if they will ever plan on using tobacco from other regions, not just for the wrapper, but for the filler as well. Not that I'm complaining, as I love their blends. I just think it'd be interesting to try more mm-hmm. multi-region Fuente cigars. That is a well-kept secret that's pretty well out. Fuente, <laughs> you, if you get a Fuente cigar that has six leaves in it, it can come from six different countries. Okay. They were some of the early blenders from around the world, uh, the whole Dominican was. Uh, it's like asking Grandma what her recipe is. She's not going to tell you everything in it. Mm-hmm. And Fuente, historically, will tell you the wrapper, it will tell you the binder, and the filler are all Dominican. I'm here to tell you they're not. I've been where they store tobacco, and okay. you see tobacco from all over the world. All right. So they're, you're enjoying tobacco from around the world now. Okay. okay. So the 858 cigar, there. the 858, which is a very unique to our line, mm-hmm. nothing else tastes like it has a leaf in there that nobody knows what it is except the really? four days. Yeah, I like the 858 and the 858 Maduro a lot. Yes. They're both my, yes. Kind of, my go-tos for a while, just as grab and go, grab and go at the beginning. That's such a popular cigar that I don't know why they don't put it in other things, but that's mm-hmm. just that, that was Arturo Fuente's personal blend. Mm-hmm. Wow. Never was available until after he passed away. If you look at the lid in the 858 box, the Vista in there, that's a history of the Fuente family and where they've grown tobacco and of tobacco. I love there. that about Fuente, all the romance and stuff that yes. comes in the boxes and, and yes. the boxes themselves oh you know yeah they're, they're well that 858 box was the first wood box mm-hmm. okay like oh, yeah. everybody everybody said you're gonna go broke you can't you can't put cigars in a box like that and now look at us everybody, you know yeah. everything's in a nice yeah, box absolutely. Yeah. True everybody. johnny flake is a great guy on stogie <laughs> friends um he asks when will the 858 and the cuban bellicoso be offered with risotto wrappers again that might speak to the whole Christmas thing again, or is that a different Possibly. Issue? They make the 858 with a risotto wrapper and with a sun-grown wrapper. Mm-hmm. The scuttlebutt is we're going to see more sun-grown wrappers. We saw a lot of them and during the Christmas time. Mm-hmm. They shipped a lot of those things. I know as an industry there's difficulty with the Cameroon wrappers, uh, tobacco coming out of Cameroon, Africa. Uh, that would, would vary according to the political situation in Cameroon. It's a very poor country. But what I'm being told, and this is all secondhand, uh, what I'm being told is that they don't know if the soil or the climate, something has changed over there, and they're not getting the quality Cameroon wrapper. No one is. Mm -hmm. So people are trying to kind of look and see what they might substitute. If you remember back in the boom, cigar boom in the 90s, everybody got short of Cameroon wrapper. We had a similar situation back there, and and people took whole lines from Cameroon and put other wrappers on it. That's where your Havana 2000 came from, your Ecuadorian Sun Groans came from, your... A lot of different things like that to try and move a little bit away from that. Mm. I think we didn't we get eight five eight risotto. Didn't we get a box of probably. that? Probably. I think we did. Yeah, probably. Right. I think almost everybody did. Okay. Because it just kept coming. All right. It just kept coming at yeah. Christmas time. Yeah. yeah. I guess they were asking about the royal salutes and risotto wrapper as well. I don't think I've ever had a royal salute. <clears throat> I've, I've not had one in risotto wrapper. Mm-mm. That royal salute Maduro is one of my favorite cigars. Fuente naturally ferments. Their Maduro wrappers, which gets all the ammonia and all the acidity out of it. So I'll find Fuente Maduro's quite often be milder than a natural wrapper. Right. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree. They are so good. Where a lot of manufacturers don't have the wherewithal to take the time to go through that natural process, they'll add chemicals or add heat to it, and they can get a beautiful wrapper, but usually it's bitter as soon as you get the moisture. Hmm. Is that why those wrappers are darker? Can be, yeah. Yeah, yeah it can be, the but they'll usually be bitter, and usually as you smoke them, be stronger. Yeah, I used to sell prior to the cigar boom as many Maduros I did naturals. I think well, if you do a Maduro right, it's pretty sweet. Oh, at least yeah. to me, a, yeah, yeah, kind of an earthy, chocolatey. Yeah, yeah. sweetness. That's like, that's like a, a, good ca- a good Cameroon that's that's aged properly has mm-hmm. a natural sweetness on it. When you put it in your mouth, it just mm-hmm. oh, it's good. Well, I burned myself out on Cameroon years ago, and I don't like Cameroon anymore. Yeah. But I will still smoke the Hemingway. I, I love yeah. that. I, that. That's a Cameroon that I can smoke and, yeah. and enjoy the yeah. heck out of it. That's so yeah, you got to speak to the consistency of all the the Fuente <laughs> product. I mean, I would you know venture to say that if cigars ever got to the point where they were so popular that people kind of equate them with uh, what they are, like you know, there's let me try and explain this in a different way. People think about Coke as a product, but it's also how you say I want a soda. Mm-hmm. Like right. I want a Coke. What yeah. kind of Coke do you want, Dr. Pepper? 
Yeah. I want to, I want to, you know, Kleenex. I think that's a Texas thing. Yeah, though. but it's, it's all over the <laughs> place, know, though. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah, like same thing with Kleenex. Kleenex. They want a Kleenex. Yeah. What yeah. kind of tissue? Band-Aid. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. the brand name, but yeah. But uh, yeah. I think, you know, Fuente would probably be, you know, I want a Fuente. What kind of Fuente do you want? Eh, you know, mm. whatever. <laughs> different, you say a different brand right. of cigar. I think that's probably one of those brands, maybe Fuente and Padron are synonymous with. Their line is, is broad enough that most people can find things in the line they like. Mm -hmm. You can also find things in the line that you don't care for. Right. Of the different strengths, that sort of thing, right? And that just goes to the difference yeah. of, of cigars. If we all like the same cigar, there'd be one box in your humidor in there, and I'd be raking leaves in somebody's yard, right? <laughs> yeah. It'd be easier for the inventory, to it, track would be. <laughs> it would be. So, I got another question here from Dan who <clears throat> asks, Why is the Opus so much more expensive than the Añejo? They're both rare cigars, right. definitely. Mm -hmm. And the, the wrapper they use, the Maduro wrapper they use on the Anejo is just a phenomenal rapper. The Anejo actually was born because there was a hurricane in the Dominican and knocked down all of Fuente's aging barns for their wrappers, so they couldn't plant that year. Oh. And you couldn't just take your Opus rollers and say, okay, you're going to roll Hemingways, the Heming rollers are going to roll something else. Very status conscious about where they work in a factory, and the Opus rollers and Diamond Crown rollers are paid by the month rather than by the stick. Oh, okay. So they had to keep those people busy doing something, so they gave them some Opus filler, they gave them some Hemingway filler and some Don Carlos filler, and they had some very old Maduro wrapper, and they made what became the Anejo. Mm -hmm. But they, when they were done, done rolling them, they put them in the humidor and went back to, to rolling Opus then. They stayed in the humidor for about a year and a half, two years, until Senior said, we need the space, get them out of here. Mm -hmm. and at that time, we had, I think they, think they had around 80,000, 70, 80,000 of them. And it was, it was too much to give to just a few people, mm -hmm. but wasn't enough to give to everybody. So that was back when we did the famous automatic reorder program was going on. Okay. We sent a right. box of Anejo out to almost all of our customers. Mm -hmm. And just the demand of how good that cigar was forced them to continue it. Well, I had my first shark this past December. Oh, did you? Excellent. Yeah. Think, yeah, absolutely. One I think lady, we smoked them together. Yeah, we? yeah I love One the lady rolls that shape. Really? Really. That's why that shape is so rare. If you get it in an opus, you're getting a shark, one lady rolls them. Last time I was down there, she was sitting at a rolling table, and there are long rolling tables in the galleries. Down there was an empty chair on both sides of her, and they said if they find somebody else who can roll that cigar, they will sit beside her. Now, is, is she, she's rolling it on thigh, right? She's no. Virgin? <laughs> <laughs> virgin rolling it on thigh. <laughs> Oh, so much romance! I've cigars. not found that yet. I've seen them in pictures. <laughs> yeah, I've not no. seen that in a cigar place yet. No, I, the Anejo is special to me. It's, it's a great taste in cigar, and it is. You know, I kind of like the fact that it's not available all the time because it just makes it that much more special. Mm -hmm. It's so special to me that that's one cigar I buy each year. I buy two boxes each year. Yeah, yeah. I'm not at the box place. I'll get there, but <laughs> I right. definitely like to buy a box of those. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, that's yeah. And then another one, uh, not a question, but uh, uh, Liana Fuente makes me excited about the next generation. Yeah. And that's from uh, Jericon on Cigar Aficionado. And he asks also, uh, future release plans for the short story Maduro. Is that going to be another? Um... That's something that, again, we've used it for, like, promotions. Mm -hmm. If you buy this, you can get some of this mm -hmm. type thing. They have not put it out in production yet. Most retailers will put the work of art Maduro mm -hmm. with the short story Natural. Mm -hmm. And they're so close together that people are happy with that right now. So mm -hmm. I don't see them really adding the short story Maduro as a regular regular item in the line. I've had a few, and they're pretty special. Yeah, I like them they a lot. Really yeah, they it's are. just one of those ones you smoke it, and then you're like, oh, I want another one right away because it's just you know, so small. That short story was Senior's personal smoke. Oh, yeah? He wanted something that had some power to it, but it's quick. Mm -hmm. And he carried those things around with him, and he'd pass them out to people. So he visited the people, that sort of thing. And... People smoking, wanted more and wanted more. And there was one man rolling those personally for him, the real old gentleman, that would work maybe half a day. And he only could make so many cigars a year, so we didn't have them. And when they finally put them in production, they didn't show up on our price sheet. Of course, Fuente only changes their prices about every three, four years, all they do. They weren't on a price sheet. They missed the first price change. So we had them on a price sheet probably six, seven, or we had, we were selling six, seven years before they ever showed up on a price sheet oh, wow. at all. The, the, the mm. official, the official answer was to somebody wanted some was, well, they're not in production, but I'll see if I can get you a box. Okay. <laughs> and sometimes they'd show up and sometimes you had to wait. Right. Make it even more special. Mm -hmm. um, Phil in Chicago asks, um, if Fuente has any plans to expand the Casa Fuente setup like they have in Vegas. Any plans to expand that to other cities? Not to my knowledge. That's actually not owned or operated by Fuente. Caesar's really? Palace folks went to Fuente family and asked them to put a store in there, a flagship store. Hmm. Uh, they considered it. 
realized that they were a manufacturer and not a retailer. So it's actually owned by some brothers called uh, the Fries, who have other stores in Vegas, and Robbie Levin, who is the uh, owner of Ashton Cigars. Hmm. Fuente's name is on there. Fuente, of course, keeps them supplied. They, I, I understand they get something in, in royalties hmm. uh, for the name, that sort of thing. That all goes to the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation. Oh, okay. The Fuentes do not profit from that at all. The Cigar Charity Foundation is, is something very near and dear to their, their heart and the Newman's heart. They both are partners in that along with almost all cigar smokers mm. down there. We've educated a, a tremendous amount of children. It's been recognized actually by the United Nations. That's for great. The work they've That's done awesome. down there. So when you're down in Vegas, go by Casa Fuente and buy some cigars and definitely give back. Help them definitely. Back. Give them back to and them. every October through December we have our, our two cigars provided by the Newman's and the Fuentes. Uh, unusual shaped cigars that people can buy, and that proceeds all go to the foundation. Also, we raise about a, around eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars a year for oh, the foundation great. with that each year. That's awesome. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Cool. That is awesome. So, you have a favorite Fuente cigar? A free one. A free one. <laughs> that's, that, that's mine too. That's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. You know, I I get asked that question all the time, and I keep finding new favorites. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like my children. It's hard to say. You know, I love them all. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say, oh, this one's my favorite. Maybe right now, the one I'm smoking and the one I'm with, you know, is my favorite. But yet, by golly, I've got some others I love a whole lot, too. Mm -hmm. So to actually say I have a favorite, it's, it's hard to say. The Hemingway is sure hard to beat. It is. The Hemingway and the 858 are just, just good. You, you kind of get away from them and you want to try other stuff. But, boy, those are good to go back to. Yeah, they are delicious. I'll they are. A lot. Yeah, I can't think of any Fuentes that I haven't liked. That no, I've tried. They're right. all very consistent, very tasty. And the Fuentes good quality. Are, the Fuentes are so good at blending tobacco that they usually they hit home runs. They do. Uh, they hit a lot more home runs than they do bunts. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, it's just amazing. Their their latest one they came out with, of course, was the Magnum R series, mm -hmm. and that's done phenomenal. In fact, the Magnum R forty four just was number five this year. We're talking about ratings, number mm -hmm. five cigar of the year. Wow! And it has not been out very long at all. Yeah, they get a lot of recognition. So we have um, on the last third of the El Baton here, and uh, you're very correct. It is very consistent through and through. But I'd say it hasn't even really. Usually, when you get to the end of a cigar, it gets a little more. Robust and mm -hmm. strong. No, this is this one's the same. Very but, consistent, yeah. But yeah, so it'd be a tasty. great go-to grab and go, have fun. You know, maybe <clears throat> even golf course cigar. Yeah, well, absolutely. For sure. absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I think the band even tastes good when you get down there smoking a real short. <laughs> I took my band off. I'm not gonna get to know what it tastes. No, you're, you're missing out. <laughs> we flavored those. <laughs> Well, Rick, we don't want to take any more of your time, so we do want to thank you for coming out with us today yes, and you, hanging out. Well, and, uh, I've certainly enjoyed it. Is it check in the mail? Yes, sir, it will be. Okay. Here, I'll, some, I'll uh, give you an El Baton. Yeah, you okay. want an El Baton that's been uh, sucked <laughs> on know, previously by again. another? It's my pleasure. <laughs> I enjoy talking about cigars. Well, we enjoy having you, sir. Absolutely. Thank you for your thank time. You so much, Rick. So thanks, everybody, again for listening, and uh, check us out next week. Uh, it's going to be, I think, just me and Randy next week, so we'll be back to... Uh, I actually know the Altus event is next week. Oh, that's right. We're going to do a live podcast next week. Well, it's, it won't be aired live, but... We, we might. You never know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Stranger things have happened. So we've got the Altus events here at um, the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge next week. So if you're in Richardson, Texas, definitely check us out. We're going to be um, displaying the whole line of Altus, uh, yeah. Featuring the Legacy, the Paradox, and the Vega Fina 2012 edition. As well as some uh, tastings, I believe, as well, Absolutely. right? For some, Absolutely. What, what, what kind of tastings are we going to have? We're going to have some, uh, some Speyside Scotch. Oh, okay. Scotch from the Speyside region. Excellent. So don't forget to uh, subscribe to us on the old uh, iTunes there. And check us out at Podomatic or Spreaker. And we also do have the video on YouTube, which is basically us talking with some uh, hot ladies overlaid and some cigar porn for you there as well and uh, also don't forget when you may leave those comments um, just mention what you'd like us to review we've got Absolutely. a ton of great cigars here at the Calypso Cigar uh, Shop and Lounge and we're definitely going to listen to those recommendations so again thanks for listening see you next week good night Brandon good night Randy <laughs>